Well, welcome once again to the Romans 10:17 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hi, I'm Kelly, your podcast host, and thank you again for spending some time with me for this episode. I certainly appreciate your taking the time, and this is actually an opportunity for fellowship, and I hope you'll think of it as the same thing, where we have the opportunity to walk together in our faith with God and to learn more about how we can take a daily practical application of faith and work it into our lives and to help us be useful tools for God's work as we live this life and its challenges for not only ourselves, but for so many people that we come in touch with every single day. So I appreciate your sharing some time with me on this episode. This episode's actually going to be two parts because there's so much content in here to share with you that it would be way time consuming for you to have so much all at one time. So it's better to take it in bite-sized chunks. And the episode is all about thankfulness. Thankfulness and gratitude kind of go hand in hand with each other. And I know that it's difficult sometimes for us to be thankful for so many of the blessings that we see and don't see that we're aware of and we're not aware of. But the blessings are there and we have to have kind of an attitude and an open eye to envision the things that we can be thankful for despite the challenges that we have every single day in this challenging existence that we have in this life. So this is an exciting episode opportunity to be able to share with you devotional stories and prayer sets, but also to use them as examples of daily practical applications of thankfulness that we can share with our family, our friends, co-workers. And yes, we can get the instructions on being thankful by reading the Word, but it always helps to support the Word by showing practical applications of being thankful even when it can be challenging. Once you can do that, once you can find the opportunity to be thankful for things, even in the most challenging of circumstances and times, It really changes your outlook, and it really helps give you greater strength and confidence. I want to thank you for sharing your time with me today on the Romans 1017 podcast with this episode on thankfulness. Again, it's the first of two parts. I'll have the second part for you in next week's episode, and I'll give you a little tease of that coming up a little bit later on today. So, with that in mind, thank you again for joining me for this episode, and always... Always remember, these are opportunities for fellowship, and as Christ has said, when two or more are gathered in His name, He is with us. So, let's get right to it and find out more about thankfulness on the Romans 1017 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. I'd like to talk with you about being thankful. Shift your focus with gratitude. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. From 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. It's easy to give thanks when your day's going well. You're wearing your favorite t-shirt. You got a great parking spot. Your coffee is the perfect temperature with just the right mix of sugar and creamer. You get lots of likes on the selfie you posted to Instagram. But what about those moments when things aren't going so well? You spill your coffee on your jeans. You have to wait in a long line of customers at the bank or a grocery store. You realize the battery in your smartphone is dead. In moments like these, giving thanks is difficult. But giving thanks is also essential if you want to navigate these experiences with a positive outlook. This doesn't mean being phony or pasting on a smile no matter what. Rather, it's about taking a moment to shift your focus. Instead of grumbling about the long line of customers, thank God for the cashier and pray for her family. When your smartphone needs a charge, thank God for all of the amazing technology you have access to. Choose to turn the uncomfortable moments in life into thankfulness. God, when I'm tempted to complain and grumble, help to stop and shift my focus. I want to be someone who lives in continual gratitude. Let me never lose sight of the blessings you've poured out on me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
when everything changes. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. From the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17. Sharon's been going through a season of change in her life. There have been positive changes like the start of her online business and the news that she's pregnant after years of infertility. Now she and her husband are in the middle of buying their first home. But along with these changes, there have been some losses too. Her mother passed away after a lengthy battle with an illness and her best friend moved to another country. With so much changing, Sharon has found comfort in focusing on the things that haven't changed. Her husband's encouragement and support have been steadfast. Her friends' continued text messages and notes make her feel loved. But more than that, she's thankful for the fact of God's unchanging character. She often finds herself saying, when everything changes, God doesn't. Those five words give her the courage and the confidence to embrace this season of change. Maybe you can relate to Sharon. You're going through your own changes in life, and you may sometimes feel overwhelmed or even abandoned. In those moments, look to God's unchanging nature to find comfort and support. God, thank you for being faithful and constant. Remind me when a season of change comes that I can look to you for support and guidance. Please be with me, Father, and assure my heart. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your story? I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. From Psalms 9, verse 1. One powerful way to give thanks to God is to tell others about the wonderful things He's done for you. You may be tempted to think you don't have a story to tell because yours isn't about being dramatically cured of an illness or surviving a horrible disaster. Your story may be an ordinary event. Perhaps you went through a difficult divorce and God gave you the strength to keep going. Maybe you were dealing with a co-worker that was hostile toward you and God helped you through it. If you're not sure what your story is, make a list of hard moments in your life. Then ask yourself what God did. He may have changed your circumstances by transferring your hostile co-worker to another division. Or God may have changed you by using a tough situation to make you more patient and understanding of others. Sometimes you may look at a situation and think, God's done nothing for you. Rest assured that as a child of God, He's always working on your behalf. His response to your situation may not be evident at this moment, but know that He's working all of your circumstances for His glory and your good. Whether your story's finished or still unfolding, you can still use the experience as a way to praise Him. Let the people around you know how God has worked or is working on your behalf. God, help me to share the story of what you've done in my life. Give me the courage to speak up on your behalf and praise you even if my story is still unfinished. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Approaching Your Father Do not be anxious about everything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. From Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 Austin had never been close to his father. His dad provided for his family, but rarely engaged with them. This emotional abandonment left Austin to question what role of a loving father looked like. The confusion bled over into his spiritual life, and while Austin loved God, he didn't feel engaged with Him. He was afraid to ask God anything or bring his hard questions to Him for fear he'd be rejected. But that changed for Austin in college when his football coach took him under his wing. For the first time, Austin experienced the deep and rich love of a father figure. He learned that he could approach his coach for guidance when he needed help in any area of his life. The closer Austin grew to his coach, the more he learned about the true nature of God. He discovered that God delights in hearing our requests and longs for his children to come to him. You may also be unsure of how God views you. 
you may be afraid to bug God and bother Him and think you can't approach Him. But God is eagerly waiting for you to step into His presence and share your pressing concerns. God, I'm not always sure how to approach you, but I know I want you to be a part of my life. I thank you for the reminder that you are always approachable. Show me what a kind, loving Father you are. Help me learn to bring every situation to you for guidance. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing to the Lord. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. From Psalms 95, verse 2. When it comes to praising the Lord, you can use the gift of music to do it. You don't need any formal training like voice lessons, and you don't have to join a choir or orchestra. You don't even have to know how to play the instruments. Just put on music and sing along. You can find plenty of free music through apps like Spotify and iHeartRadio. As you sing along, don't be afraid to get into the moment and play air guitar or air drums. God welcomes our enthusiasm in the middle of praise. Another way to use music to praise God is to create a playlist or mix CD for a friend going through a hard time. Choose songs with positive and encouraging messages that will uplift your friend like The Fight Song or Brave. You can also try your hand at writing music. King David is one of the most well-known songwriters of ancient times. He's believed to have written at least half of the book of Psalms. His songs cover a variety of emotions, despair and desperation, to victory and gratitude. God, thank you for the gift of music. Help me to use it to encourage myself and those around me. Let every song I sing, share, or write be an offering back to you. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 118, verse 1 Sarah's mother was emotionally abusive. When Sarah was growing up, her mom would withhold affection and comfort if Sarah did something she didn't like. Sarah tried to please her mom, but she never received the support and kindness she so desperately longed for. Sarah was left feeling like she had to earn the love of those around her. She spent a lot of time trying to be good enough. She worked hard on every project to prove herself. She was quick to help others in the hopes that they would like her. Then one day, she joined a local quilting group. She did it because she had always been interested in various crafts. What she found was a group of tight-knit women who poured into her. She began to receive the affection and motherly advice she'd craved for years. As she allowed herself to bloom, Sarah began to understand that God's love for her wasn't like her mom's. God's love for her was unconditional and unchanging. His love didn't depend on her actions or inactions. It wasn't something that would be taken away if she made a mistake or had a bad day. God's love was always there for her, no matter what. God, thank you for loving me unconditionally. Sometimes I struggle with this concept. Remind me when I'm feeling alone that your affection doesn't depend on my actions. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do it all for Him. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. From Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Tyler hated unloading the dishwasher when the plates were clean. To him, the task felt pointless. In just a few hours, all of the dishes would be used anyway, so he wondered why he would even bother doing that chore. Tyler's wife didn't share his feelings. She worked long hours and was rarely home. She expressed several times how much it meant to her when Tyler did small chores like emptying the dishwasher. Still, Tyler saw no reason to change until he heard a friend quote Louis Giglio, Every action on earth except sin can be done as an offering 
back to God, his friend shared. He immediately thought of unloading the dishwasher and the other chores he put off for another day. When he thought of them as a way to honor God, they didn't seem pointless anymore. Now he viewed them as opportunities to show his love for God and his wife. To keep a cheerful attitude, Tyler used his chore time to express gratitude. Not only did the chores go by faster, but he also discovered many ordinary gifts that he'd spent years overlooking. God, I confess, sometimes I ignore my chores or I do them with a bad attitude. Help me to look at these mundane tasks as a way to glorify you and show my loved ones how much I care. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for spending this special time with me on this episode of the Romans 1017 podcast. I'm glad to have this time with you. Every Wednesday, I will deliver to you a new podcast episode, sometimes devotional stories, scripture studies, Christian living examples and points of view, Bible studies, and so much more. Here's a small preview of the next episode you'll find here on the Romans 1017 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let's talk about the importance on extending grace. The best land. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. From Genesis chapter 13 verse 6. God told Abraham to move to another country, but Abraham didn't make this journey alone. His nephew Lot also came with him. Both men had so much abundance that there simply wasn't enough space for the two households in the new country. Eventually, fights began breaking out between Abraham's servants and Lot's workers. So Abraham went to Lot to discuss the matter. He explained that he didn't want the disagreements to sour their relationship, so they should spread out from one another. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. From Genesis chapter 13 verse 9. So Lot turned and chose the best land for himself. Abraham could have argued for the better land. He was older and more experienced. No doubt he had mentored Lot over the years and taught him to be successful. But Abraham didn't start to petition or hire a lawyer. Instead, he chose to value his relationship with his nephew, and in doing this, he extended grace. God, help me to value my relationships. Give me a heart that's willing to extend grace even when I don't get what I want. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the next episode on the Romans 1017 podcast. I look forward to being with you then. Now, back to our current episode, and most of all, again, I say thank you for listening. Show your gratitude. You will be enriched in every way to be generous on every occasion, and your giving through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For this ministry of service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanksgiving to God. From 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. You can show your gratitude to God for all of the blessings He's given you by being generous to others. Sometimes that generosity might be financial. For example, you notice that the single mom who lives nearby doesn't own a winter coat. Seeing her need, you buy a coat and leave it on her doorstep to be discovered. But your kindness doesn't always have to be a financial gift. You can also give of your time. Bake a sweet treat and take it over to a friend who's lonely. Spend some time at her house, sharing the dessert and having a heartfelt conversation. Let your friend know you care and that she can reach out to you anytime. Another way to share your time is to help an elderly neighbor. Maybe he needs help mowing his lawn, fixing an appliance or cleaning out the gutters. Volunteer to spend a few hours this weekend doing these tasks. God, you've given me so much. Now, I want to be generous to someone else. Please, put a person in need in my path this week. Give me eyes to spot their need and then the courage to act on it. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
when God carries you. Praise the Lord, praise God our Savior, for each day He carries us in His arms. From Psalm 68, verse 19. Duane was walking through his neighborhood with his three-year-old daughter. She toddled in front of him, taking in all of the sights and sounds of their street. She was fascinated by everything around her. But after walking for a few minutes, she became tired. Duane quickly scooped his daughter into his arms and gently placed her on his shoulders. At first, she was afraid to move and clung tightly to his face and neck. But Duane stood still and patiently waited. When she finally realized she was safe, the tiny toddler relaxed and he began walking back to the house. Suddenly, the little girl shifted and spread her arms like she was soaring. She started to giggle at the freedom as she enjoyed the new view. Duane couldn't help but smile at his daughter's happiness, delighting in her laughter. Much like Duane, God carries you each day in his arms. He longs for you to know his embrace and fully rest in it. That doesn't mean there won't be problems or obstacles in your day, but it does mean that he's with you, holding on to you where you go. God, help me to feel your embrace today. Like Dwayne's daughter, I want to enjoy the journey and rest in your arms, knowing I'm held securely. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are you thankful for? I always thank my God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. From 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Jenny and her friend Marie were outcasts at their high school. They were frequently the target of unkind rumors and mean pranks. They never knew what cruel joke would be played on them next. But at school, there was a sophomore named Tony. All of the students liked Tony because he was kind to everyone, regardless of their social status. Tony used his influence to discourage bullying of other students. Jenny and Marie noticed whenever they were around Tony that they weren't treated poorly. He became a safe place where the girls knew they could hang out without fear or rejection. Years later, Jenny heard that Tony had been in a car accident. She remembered how kind he'd been in high school and wrote him a note thanking him for what he'd done for her and her friend. Take a moment and think about all of the people in your life, your siblings, your friends, your co-workers, your boss, your mentor, your small group or church. All of these people make up your unique community. Who are you thankful that God brought into your life? Write a note letting them know how much they mean to you and how thankful you are for their influence. God, thank you for bringing this special person into my life. I ask that you show me how I can do something kind for them this week. And I make this small prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring your heartache. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. From 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. Hannah lived in a time where a woman's worth was defined by how many heirs she could produce for her husband. She was barren. Many people considered her worthless. She was frequently taunted and looked down upon by other women. Every month she felt the same hope Maybe this time I'll be pregnant, she might have whispered to herself. But month after month, she faced the same disappointment. Her empty womb probably felt like a rejection, a constant reminder of her failure as a woman. Each year, Hannah traveled with her husband and his other wives and children to the annual feast, but the trip only served to intensify her grief. Then one year, she decided to take her pain to the Lord. During times of heartache, it's natural to want to withdraw. Perhaps you think that showing pain makes God think less of you or that He doesn't care when you're hurting. But Hannah's story is proof that not only does God care deeply about our pain, He also acts when His children cry out to Him. God, when I feel overlooked and ignored, help me to not hide, but instead to take my pain to you. You care about my heartaches and my troubles? 
And I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. When you need courage, when I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. From Psalm 138, verse 3. Todd was facing pressure at work. A project his firm had promised a client was very far behind schedule. He was responsible for the project, so he brought it to his boss, looking for advice on how to handle the situation. Unwilling to anger their biggest client, Todd's boss advised him to lie. He wanted Todd to tell the client that not only was the project on time, it was being completed under budget, too. He even gave Todd the falsified expense report. Todd struggled with what to do. He wanted to come clean with the client. He didn't see how any good could come of lying. But he was also concerned about what his boss would do. Would he retaliate and fire Todd? He thought of his family, of his wife with their new baby. How could he look her in the eye when he'd promised he'd always take care of their family? Todd showed up to work early Tuesday for the client meeting. When he felt squeamish about lying, he thought of his newborn. Right before he was scheduled to go into the meeting, he received a text from a friend with Psalm 138, verse 3 in it. Curious, Todd looked up the meaning of emboldened and learned that it means giving someone the courage or confidence to do something. The verse was just the reminder he needed. He paused to ask God to embolden him. Then he went into the client meeting and told the truth with courage. God, thank you for the gift of courage. When I'm facing a test of integrity, please embolden me. Show me how to handle these moments with wisdom and bravery. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Start your day with gratitude. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. From Psalm 100, verse 4. Some mornings, it's hard to enter God's throne room with a grateful heart. Maybe you overslept because your alarm clock didn't wake you, or perhaps you had repeated nightmares, or maybe one of your kids was up sick all night. On the mornings it's hardest to practice gratitude, that's when it's the most important that you do it. If you're struggling to be grateful, try one of these activities. A journal. Dial into your five senses and use them to help you journal. Make a list like, I'm grateful that I can hear. Then list four to five things you can hear right now. For example, you might put the birds chirping outside your bedroom window, your child's laughter, or the hiss of your coffee pot as it brews. Create a gratitude jar. Each morning, take a second to write down something you're grateful for. Focus on just one thing and write it down on a slip of paper. Put your slip of paper into your gratitude jar. Then, at the end of the year, you'll be able to read through 365 things you gave thanks for. Practice the ABCs of gratitude. You can do this exercise anywhere, and it doesn't require much time. Simply start listing what you're grateful for by letter. For example, you might say, I am grateful for the cool morning air, the warmth of my bed, the feel of my soft clothes, etc. God, help me to use the mornings to focus on my blessings. That way I can approach each day with a grateful heart and a thankful spirit. I make this small prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Romans 1017 podcast is sponsored in part by the publishers of the Christian audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me, Stories, Prayers, Scriptures, and Thoughts God Has Been Waiting Your Entire Life to Share With You. The topics of conversation you can have with God are truly endless. In this Christian audiobook, you'll discover that you can talk with God about healing, understanding conversation and prayer with God, forgiveness, extending grace, honoring motherhood and fatherhood, finding peace, and so much more. You can find your copy of the Christian audiobook, Please Just Talk With Me, from your favorite audiobook retailer worldwide. Just go to the retailer website and search the title, Please Just Talk With Me. 
a great gift for yourself or anyone you know who needs to have a conversation with God, courtesy of the publishers at Positive Life Audiobooks and the Romans 10:17 podcast, where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, back to our episode that we're listening to today, and thanks again for joining me here on the Romans 1017 podcast. Perspective changes everything. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, and make known among the nations what He has done. From 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. Penny and her family watched the storm roll in from the safety of their house in the suburbs. The window howled, and the branches on the neighborhood trees bowed under the pressure. The rains drenched the ground as the wind continued. Trees were uprooted. A transformer blew and the entire town lost electricity. But as soon as the storm was over, neighbors were outside cleaning up the damage. Word quickly spread that a local store was opening their doors and serving hot food. Customers lined up, hundreds of people from the community flooding in. Penny and her family bought a hot meal and headed home. Penny says, That chicken tasted so good. It was overdone and dry, but right then, it was the best food I had ever had. It's easy to take things like a hot meal, access to clean water and electricity for granted. You have it every day, so you assume that you always will. But what if you don't? What if you woke up tomorrow to find you'd lost everything but your friends and family? As upsetting as losing electricity was, it also offered Penny the chance to reevaluate and notice all of the little things, like hot food and warm showers, that she had been ignoring. Doing this helped her remember to practice gratitude more often. God, thank you for all of the blessings I normally take for granted. Thank you for gifts like food in the fridge, shoes to protect my feet, the ability to read, and so much more. I make this prayer of thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Gratitude in Action Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for He is highly exalted. From Exodus chapter 15, verses 20 and 21. The tribe of Israel had just seen God perform an amazing rescue. They'd been freed from Egypt where they'd been enslaved for hundreds of years. Emotions must have been running high. The Israelites were probably stunned, scared, excited, and delighted. Where would they go? What would they do? How would they provide for their families? It would have been easy to give in to overwhelm, but Miriam had another response. She quickly grabbed her tambourine, known then as a timbrel, and began to praise God. She thanked God for what He had done for her and her loved ones. The interesting thing about Miriam's response is that it started a chain reaction. As soon as she began to praise God, others joined her. The women nearby also began to play their instruments and dance in delight, too. Like Miriam, you can also lead others to thank God. It starts by cultivating an attitude of gratitude in your own heart and mind. From there, you can encourage your spouse, your children, or your friends to practice gratitude, too. Ask loved ones what they're grateful for today. Prompt them to take a moment and think about a blessing they received this past week. Continually encourage those around you to share what God has done for them. God, I make this prayer to let my eyes always see your blessing. Let your praises be always on my tongue and help me to inspire others to show their gratitude. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Rich in love. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. From Psalm 145, verse 8. Christy worked hard to make sure everything she did was her very best. But Christy was also a perfectionist, which made it hard for her to let go of little things. Every night she made a mental list of everything she'd failed at that day. 
She included things like fussing at her toddler, needing an extra day to complete an assignment at work, failing to log her calories, and more. All of the guilt and shame she piled on herself made it hard for her to approach God. She felt like she was carrying around a report card filled with failing grades, and she kept waiting for God to tell her how disappointed he was in her. Diane, an older woman at the school where Christy worked, recognized that Christy was struggling. She'd often drop by Christy's classroom after the day was finished to offer her encouragement. As they became friends, Diana helped Christy to realize that God wasn't grading her. She explained that God was rich in love towards Christy. He cared far more about her than the things she did or didn't do. With her friend's reassuring words, Christy found it easier to seek God. Instead of thinking that God was disappointed and angry, she realized that God was kind and gracious toward her. God, sometimes I'm tempted to believe I'm a disappointment or failure in your eyes. On those days, please remind me of the truth that you are compassionate and rich in love toward me. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, these are such wonderful stories and examples of practical application of faith, and in this case, the practical application of being thankful. Oh, what a great episode to be able to share with you. And again, I thank you so much for spending time with me today on this podcast. I look forward to being with you for part two of our thankfulness episode. And I always want to tell you thank you for spending time. Again, it's an opportunity for fellowship that I certainly enjoy, and I hope you do as well. And also want to encourage you that as these podcasts are downloadable, feel free, download, Share it with family, friends, co-workers. You never know when somebody has made a humble prayer to God that God might be using you and a message similar to this as an answer to their prayer. Look for those opportunities. And in the meantime, be blessed. And thanks again for listening to the Romans 10:17 podcast where faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God.